He was the world's most wanted drug trafficker. For decades, the ruthless Wacom El Chapo Guzman destroyed millions of lives and reaped billions of dollars. But when he was finally captured a few weeks ago in Mexico, wearing a filthy singlet over a middle-aged paunch, El Chapo looked more like El Chipo. While law enforcement authorities rejoiced at his arrest, it's nowhere near mission accomplished in the war against drugs. Just the opposite. Business is booming. Record amounts of narcotics are still being smuggled around the world, including Australia. And El Chapo Sinaloa cartel continues to rule with deadly force. It was bloody and violent. Mexico's elite Marines were taking no chances, recapturing the world's biggest drug dealer, Wacom El Chapo Guzman. But their war on drugs goes way beyond bringing down this kingpin. The border between America and Mexico is the real front line in the narcotics battle. These imposing fences, often built right through the middle of towns, appear totally impenetrable. But they're not. You just need to go underground to see why. A network of secret tunnels literally crisscross the two countries. Freeways built by El Chapo where he plied his illegal trade. What I find extraordinary is that this tunnel is 70 feet deep. That's about 23 to 24 meters. Mexico is that way. The United States is that way. Right above us is the border fence. It is amazing that such a huge tunnel like this could be built like someone like El Chapo, right under the feet of authorities. You see the electrical wire in there? This is all original. This is just one of nearly 200 tunnels that have been detected so far by US authorities. And, that, and you can feel the air's changed. Yeah, it gets a little bit heavier. Further in you go, that's for sure. After six years with the San Diego Customs and Border Patrol in Southern California, Lance Lenore has seen his share of El Chapo tunnels. This is like the Cadillac the it, tunnels right here. This is the top end. Yeah. This, this is, is the top end tunnel. Yeah. Tunnels can take up to two years to build and cost millions. But it's a small price compared with the billions of dollars of drugs shipped through here. I guess every time you shut another tunnel down, that's another slap to people like El Chapo. Considering the time and effort goes into constructing these things, yeah, that's a pretty big blow. That's two years you know, of hard work down the drain. Yeah. And they gotta, they gotta go to plan B. El Chapo didn't need plan B when authorities thought they'd well and truly locked him away two years ago in Mexico's Altiplano Maximum Security Prison. Last July, he simply got his tunnel men to engineer and dig him a daring escape. Prison cameras see El Chapo calmly walk to the shower block in the corner of the cell. Six seconds later, he's gone. Into a ventilated tunnel already rigged with lights, he jumps on this motorbike bolted to rail tracks and disappears. When you come here and see for yourself just how far this tunnel went, you've got to admit it's pretty impressive. It started at the jail there, went all the way underneath these cornfields, right along here to this house nearly two kilometres away. It was an audacious escape that made headlines around the world. 
For Mexico's authorities, it was humiliating. This was El Chapo's second prison bust-out. He's the Houdini of the criminal world, would you agree? Absolutely. Jim Dinkins, a former director of America's Homeland Security Investigations, had been tracking the drug king for over a decade. Do you have a begrudging admiration for that? No, because you can't admire somebody with that much evil in them. Is he evil? Is that what he is? Well, it's hard not to be evil if you're responsible for the deaths of hundreds of people. To understand just who El Chapo is, you need to start here in Sinaloa, his Mexican home state. This place oozes drugs and drug money. El Chapo was born into poverty, but soon became the richest and most powerful drug lord in the world. His success made him a local hero. Wow. That's, we've just offered marijuana to the patron saint. <laughs> Pretty <Really>? impressive. <laughs> is he smart? He's obviously smart in many ways. Not in, he's street smart. So, and he's also, he knows how to influence people. He does it by intimidation or by making them rich. Is he charismatic? I would say he's char charismatic as in the sense that he's amassed a lot of followers that are envious of his ability to rise up through the streets, poorly educated in the mass, and making us one of the rich, richest and most powerful men in the world. Mexico's recent history has been marked by violent drug wars, which have killed more than 100,000 people. El Chapo's Sinaloa cartel is among the most vicious. And here in the border town, Tijuana, the police drug squad has it squarely in its sights. But enforcing the law is not easy when so many in the community are on the receiving end of bribes. Right now, in this moment, the people think the narco-traffickants, the criminals, are heroes. The young people see the drug traffickers as heroes. Uh -huh. Former police chief Julian Lezeloa has been called Mexico's bravest man. Eight times he's been targeted by the drug cartels, and the last time, last year, they almost won. As he sat in a car, a gunman walked up and shot him at close range. It was three shots. And the last in my spinal. In the streets of Tijuana, six drug cartels vie for dominance and the huge drug profits. El Chapo's cartel controls 60% of the drug market, which earns him about $3 billion a year. And a slice of those profits comes from Australia. And the reason for taking drugs to Australia is pure and utter profit. Absolutely. In the United States, the average kilo of cocaine in the streets of the United States might get you $25,000. In Australia, you could make $250,000 of that same kilo. <laughs> and to be successful in Australia, is it reasonable to assume that El Chapo has a network of people in Australia? Yes. There's usually a homegrown network that's already existing there for a distribution of, uh, to the street level. El Chapo has wealth and fame, and not surprisingly, loads of confidence which might explain why, while still on the run, he gave an interview to Hollywood actor Sean Penn. 
He happily admitted he was in the narcotics business, but not the cause of their devastating impact. Si no hubiera consumo, no hubiera venta. Y eso es muy, muy cierto que el consumo día con día es más grande y más grande, entonces pues hay venta y hay venta. El Chapo's flirtations with Hollywood proved to be part of his undoing. Mexican authorities were monitoring Sean Penn and his companion, Mexican actress Kate Del Castillo. Reasonable to suspect that he thought he was invincible? Yes. You know, when he escaped the second time, I thought he'd keep his head down and be so grateful that he was out that we'd never hear from him again. But his ego, once again, and his greed just for power and for notoriety, just overcome him. Just six months after his daring prison escape, Mexican Marines cornered the drug lord in Los Mochas on the country's east coast. El Chapo's last moments of freedom were violent. This was a ferocious battle. When it was all over, five of El Chapo's men were dead inside this house. And even though El Chapo escaped through a tunnel and into the sewer system, he was finally nabbed in a stolen car trying to get out of town. What is he thinking? At that moment, he's blaming himself for having been so arrogant to get caught again. El Chapo is now back behind bars in the same prison he escaped from. This time, security has been overhauled. Now, hundreds of police and military guard the jail. New cameras and motion sensors have been installed in his cell and there are even dogs trained specifically to sniff out El Chapo's scent. It's some comfort to those whose lives he's devastated, including former police chief Julian Lezeloa. So you are paralyzed? Yes. That is a shocking price to pay. Is it worth it? Yes. Do you have a score to even then? Do you, do you have to, you've got some unfinished business? No. It's not personal? No. It's not personal. It's work. It's just work. Uh -huh. That is extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> US authorities are seeking El Chapo's extradition. The hope is that he'll spend the rest of his life imprisoned in America. That may take months. For now, night has fallen on El Chapo's free run in Sinaloa. But as he stands alone in his cell, no one doubts for a minute that he's already planning his next escape. If you were in charge of uh, keeping El Chapo in a prison in Mexico, how would you be feeling? I'd be getting him extradited as fast as possible. You'd get him out of there? Yes. Right now, if he's not already trying to bribe somebody, trying to intimidate somebody, uh, and that would be the part that would worry me the most, is the intimidation of people working at the prison and their family members. Even from inside his cell, he'd be working it. Yeah, he has a whole corporation of criminals outside that, those doors that we're already planning for if he ever got arrested, what would we do? So he has, he's had time to think of that. And I would want him out of my jail and out of my prison and out of my country as fast as possible.
Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.